So here's a video update for you of the first open door flying restoration project, which is this uh, 1959 Piper Super Cub. It's a PA-18A model, and if you look uh, closely here, you can see that this is a flat top fuselage. It does not have the center uh, stringer that runs down the middle like most Super Cubs do. And it has this big hole up here, which uh, there's a large aluminum panel that goes in here that has a door that opens up. Uh, this is the hopper door because this airplane, uh, unlike a standard Super Cub, had a removable rear seat and you could put a hopper in there and actually set this up to be a light duty crop duster kind of back in the day when uh, crop dusting first began. I'm sure it was not a really great crop duster, but it creates a really interesting airplane. And this uh, hopper door assembly up here was uh, essentially in like new condition. So uh, I'm actually doing this airplane for um, a brother I have out in California, and he and I both agreed that the uh, hopper door was a really neat um, uh, heritage legacy element to this airplane, and since it was in such good shape, we retained it. Apparently most guys uh, in the past when they've restored these A models, uh, they've converted them with the center spine and made them look more like a uh, standard Super Cub. So anyway, this one's a flat top, um, and uh, I've taken it completely down to... Uh, uh, the fuselage was stripped and sandblasted and uh, actually wound up, wasn't the original plan, but wound up putting a lot of uh, STC modifications on the airplane, including this one right here, this uh, enlarged baggage door. Uh, being an A model, it had a small door in this area, which allowed you to get to the battery, which would be right where that backpack is. Um, that's one of the other STCs. The battery is now up under the front seat, and it's a small gel cell battery, much better set up. Um, but uh, this door, much larger, so one, it lets you get into the baggage area more easily, and then one of the other modifications is this large extended baggage area. While you can't put a lot of weight back there, you can put longer items or lightweight items back there. So this larger door allows great access to that. Um, and uh, the door is a custom-made door that I built. Uh, it's actually a built-up wood door with uh, aircraft plywood on both sides and then covered with fabric so that we get the same texture as the outside. And I also set it set it in flush uh, so that uh, it trims out really nice. So I'm real happy. It needs a stripe yet, as you can see. That's why I'm uh, fitting the door today is so I can uh, prepare to uh, put the red stripe on and paint the uh, inside red to match the, uh, the leather that's on the inside over the aluminum uh, interior panels. Um, this airplane uh, originally, as an A model, had a removable crossbar back here for the rear seat uh, back, but um, it was uh, kind of a clunky arrangement, and it also uh, did not have an adjustment to it, whereas I have put in another uh, STC modification so that there are two positions for the rear seat back so that you can get some more uh, additional legroom, three inches of additional legroom. So the original lugs uh, were cut off, and these new lugs, two sets of lugs, were put in place. The crossbar is not here right now. It has to be in for the airplane to be flown, because it provides quite a bit of structural integrity for the fuselage. Uh, but that was another modification, uh, as we're uh, adding these uh, seat belt fittings for the front seat that are attached to the fuselage rather than to the seat frame. Um, also put the uh, X-brace uh, overhead. Another one of the mods, again, this, the battery is sitting underneath the front seat here with the custom uh, leather seats to match the leather side panels. Everything's pretty much been redone, an all-new panel. All the instruments have been uh, refurbished and uh, silk screened with new faces uh, with an off-white ink, so it has kind of a little more of a vintage feel. Uh, but there is an iPad Mini that is mounted here that can be uh, easily removed. Um, it's just mounted on a nice little... Uh, panel ball mount here from the, the RAM system so that you can quickly remove all of that mount and, uh, and make the airplane look very vintage and retro in just a moment. Um, and then I also mounted a handheld over here. I made a special bracket that mounts to the uh, throttle tunnel here with uh, some nut plates so you can just pull these two screws and this bracket can be removed and there's no trace then of uh, radio. But I put a uh, nut plate in the back of this. Uh, this would be the double-A battery pack for this particular Sporties handheld. And uh, so you can't put batteries in there now because of that nut plate. But what it allows you to do is I put this uh, this uh, um, thumb screw on a uh, wire so you can't lose it. It threads right up through the nut plate and uh, makes the radio nice and secure. Also, I'm mounting an uh, external antenna so there's a coax comes off of the top as well as the other um, wires necessary to integrate the 
radio into the intercom and such. And fortunately, with this position, they all disappear very quickly right underneath the panel. So it should be a pretty clean uh, installation. I put in a uh, Sigtronix um, uh, intercom over here uh, with the round face plate to pick up more on that vintage feel that we've got here with the old steam gauges, which I just think looks fantastic. Um, and uh, the uh, intercom uh, had um, on that round face had lettering and such, but uh, of course I didn't like the look of it. So I uh, redid all that lettering. In fact, I actually made made this font here, uh, which you can see up here in the left wing root. You see some of the, some of the lettering. Um, the font, I actually made that using the, the, the word throttle, which I still need to put down here uh, on the throttle area, but I uh, scanned those in and sort of made my own letters and then made my own font so I could get kind of a, kind of a nice uh, vintage look. Everything up here has been redone, but pretty much done the way as it was, um, as the airplane was. Uh, this airplane has about 2,000 hours total time on it, so it's fairly low time airplane for its age. Uh, uh, mounted headset jacks up here uh, to integrate in with the, the uh, intercom and the uh, radio. Um, all new floorboards, which uh, are uh, stained with a mahogany stain with a slight little red tint to them, which I thought looked really nice. Uh, everything's been cleaned up, redone, new hardware, um, pretty extensive restoration. Um, the uh, rear seat is uh, still being finished off on the, uh, the leather. Um, here's the uh, door, which I just sprayed the uh, Daytona white on the door uh, here yesterday. And uh, so I'm also fitting it for the looking at how the stripes needs to be uh, taped off so I can put some color uh, the stripe on the outside and to put the red on the inside to match the rest of the interior. Um, got the uh, engine all mounted up here um, with a refurbished uh, muffler and uh, yeah, the uh, cowl mount brackets have been uh, cleaned up and repainted and uh, several of the Southco fasteners have been replaced. Uh, a lot of little details but the engine primarily was in uh, low time and really good shape so it didn't need uh, didn't need a lot of work there. This also has the 2,000 pound gross weight upgrade kit on it, um, which uh, is uh, mostly some things that go into the wing. And there's a few other things, including the heavy duty bungees down below here. Um, and then I've been working on uh, getting the uh, ailerons uh, hooked up. Still need to put some paint on the ailerons, but been running the cables. Uh, fortunately, I poked this hole and it's in the right spot, so that's good news. Um, so working out those details and uh, hoping to have this this thing done here pretty soon getting pretty close got a lot of the detail stuff knocked out the flap uh, cables are all connected now uh, so just the flaps themselves need to be uh, finished painted and installed so that's uh, some good progress there uh, the window channels new window channels are in place here and the windows will go in here real soon um, so while I have a lot of little details left to do um, a lot of the really tedious stuff has been done and has turned out really, really nicely. So I'm real happy about that. Obviously, I still have the windshield to install, um, but it's been test fit. The boot cowl is getting the final paint once again. I painted it once, but uh, decided to improve the, the uh, details on that. And uh, so it's uh, going to be finished here real soon. And uh, hopefully, actually, in another week or so, I like to uh, have the... Uh, basics of the cowling on get the prop on and uh, maybe even put some fuel in the tanks now that they're they're all rigged up uh, fuel lines are all attached and such and uh, maybe see if uh, make sure there's no leaks and maybe even run the engine some um, and uh, while i'm still working out uh, a lot of these other little details so uh, the airplane's covered in the stort system which is the uh, water-based and waterborne paints and uh, makes it uh, a little easier to deal with from a non not so toxic and easier cleanup kind of a situation so that's pretty cool uh, the the colors are uh, Daytona white and uh, uh, it's Santa Fe red I think <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Santa Fe red and the colors are just awesome I also put flattener in the paint to take the uh, the harsh gloss off so it gives it more of a vintage look a little more like the airplane probably will look like uh, when it came out of the factory. This is uh, the, the scheme that the airplane had on it, um, except for some changes. The struts were not 
white. I mean, I'm sorry, they weren't red, they were white. And the leading edges were not painted red. Those are some details that have been added to give, uh, give a little more uh, color to the airplane. And also I've changed the shape of the stripes and positions and, and a lot of the details um, to, uh, at least in my opinion, give the airplane a little better look and maybe a little more modern uh, look while still capturing uh, the, the fabulous vintage feel of an old Piper Super Cub. So anyway, so there's an update for you. I'll do some more of these here pretty soon as, uh, as the project is uh, getting closer to completion and looking forward to finally flying this old girl.